seats. You don't have to be a carpenter to put a bottom on a chair, you know. <laughs> like to welcome some of the late arrivals here. No soliciting, sir. I'm sorry. You have to go. <laughs> Somebody wants to go to bed. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it that way, dear. He was yawning. <laughs> so, so. Boy, I haven't seen a woman's eyes light up that fast in a long time, either. <laughs> they were half upstairs already. Like the fella says, my wife's an angel. The other one says, you're lucky. Mine's still alive. <laughs> That's like Mr. Gates said, Harry, I just got a French poodle for my wife. I said, gee, I wish I could find a trade like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you laugh, you ought to meet my wife. Boy, I promised I'd go through hell for him. Boy, she saw I kept my promise, too. <laughs> if marriage is a road to happiness, I've been on one hell of a detour, that's for sure. <laughs> Remember the one that fell us his house of missus? He says, better than nothing. Huh? <laughs> I asked the fellow, I says, do you cheat on your wife? He says, well... <laughs> My goodness, the honeymooners are still here. How do you like that? My golly, that's a surprise, but I'm very flattered. That's one of the nicest compliments I've ever had. <laughs> Watch that stuff, doctor. Watch that stuff. You forgot your rubber gloves, sir. <laughs> we have one OB here, and we also have Dr. Van Etten over here, one of the outstanding proctologists in the country over there. I can see you know what a proctologist is, but I don't think the rest do. <laughs> And I'm not going to tell you, Mr. Holland, but that's a doctor that always has a lot of patients, but seems to get a little behind his appointments. So. <laughs> now, don't laugh. They make piles of money. They do very well. <laughs> nice to have the rear admirals with us, too. <laughs> Boy, isn't this a great way to break up a friendship? Look at this. Six fellas and one girl, five fellas and two girls, four fellas and two girls. <laughs> oh, my goodness, how rough can it get? <laughs> Look at one man and two girls over here. Nice to have you Mormons with us, too. <laughs> Remember when I was young enough to carry a spare myself? <laughs> no wonder you got... No wonder you got six fellas and one girl over here. Look at the faces. It looks like Stud Row at Calumet Farm over here. Look at that. These are reserve over here, and they've been keeping it in reserve about as long as they can, too. <laughs> well, we all have our problems. <laughs> And when you get back to your wives, you'll catch up so fast, too. You'll be surprised. I told them about some of the athletes that we have in here tonight. We have Mr. Riley, the gentleman sitting over there, who is not an athlete, but has probably contributed more to the Little Leagues than any man in his territory. He's known as one of the better-known athletic supporters in the world. Old Jacques Riley. Nice to have you. He's the big stopping fellow over there. <laughs> of course, I love football, coach. And what do you coach, by the way, sir? What is it? Track. Track, uh-huh. Well, I never was very fast myself. But one of the embarrassing things came out. I, I went, tried to make the team to impress my girlfriend, and I didn't, but she did. <laughs> well, not everybody. The quarterback was a little queer, I think. She didn't give her a <laughs> You know, football's such a great, the only time of the year you can come with a girl under one arm and a, a blanket in the other, like I say, and nobody gives you any trouble. You know. <laughs> any Georgians here tonight? Anybody from Georgia? George, you know the rambling wreck from Georgia Tech? All right, let's do the total loss from Holy Cross. Here we go. <laughs> Well, we always do a little kosher Irish song just about this time, and I'd like to do it for you now. Just... <laughs> Shh. 
sure it seems like only yesterday I sailed from out of court. I landed up from Erin's Isle, I landed in New York. There wasn't a soul to greet me there, no stranger on the shore. But Irish luck was with me, boys, or riches came galore. And now that I'm going back again to leave on Erin's Isle. You, you Protestants, shut up and pay attention over there now. They may not like me, Mr. Mason, but they ain't going to ignore me, that's for sure. <laughs> but me men will introduce them all, and this too he will say. Me Brannigan, Pannigan, Milligan, Gilligan, Duffy, McCuffy, Malachy, Mahon, Rafferty, Lafferty, Daddledy, Candledy, Doody, Yo, Doody, Will, Doody, Mahon, Madigan, Cadigan, Lanahan, Flanahan, Fergan, O'Hagan, O'Hulahan, Flynn, Shanahan, Manahan, Fogarty, Hoverty, Kelly, and O'Flynn. There's Gold, Bloom, Rosenblum, Idelson, Meyer, Slavine, Silverstein, Burstyn, and Fine. There's Abraham, Glassman, Grossman, Kaufman, Perlman, and Waterman, Solomon, Stuckin. <laughs> See who's paying attention. There's Fleischer, and Pear, and Shiner, and Moskowitz, Ginsburg, Goldberg, Rappaport, Knoxes, Lippy, and Levy, and Siegel, and Lipschitz, Cohen, Shapiro, Katz, Fox, Carter, Grillion, Bissett, Frey, Steele, Vanetta, Thomas, Smith. Smith, there's a likely story. <laughs> it's all right, you get by the room, clerk. You're safe with me. Uh, <laughs> Hamill, Hendricks. Let's see, all the way from Sweden, too, by golly. He's a long way. You've got to be a heck of a man to come from Sweden. <laughs> the Tirola nights are six months long over there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting way over in the fireplace all by himself. Uh, let's see, we got Moore, uh, Barone, Kennedy. Get us welcome to the Galton Bay. <laughs> We got them all. Thank heavens they don't make the room any bigger. <laughs> Look at this one looking at his watch like he's got something waiting for him. <laughs> don't laugh, I think you waited too long over here, too. <laughs> Isn't that the way? Look at these husbands, the way they ignore you wives all night long, five minutes before it's time to come home. Sweetheart, have you enjoyed yourself? Is everything all right? So the, about as obvious as a hernia at a weightlifter's convention. <laughs> well, we have the chemist headed for the laboratory over here. This. Oh, certainly. She's going. Well, we'll do a little European number while you're going. <laughs> Something sort of continental, Mr. Steele, you know. <laughs> Straighten her out, she just went the wrong way. <laughs> That's something you never see. Did you ever notice? Never see one woman leave by herself, Mr. Cardin. Always two together. I mean, I've seen it happen, you know. One says, uh, Maisie, will you... Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maisie says, no, they'll sit there for three hours. <laughs> No, there's some little service they do for each other we men know nothing about, you know? <laughs> time and time I've seen it happen. <laughs> You'll be sorry you didn't go with her, too. <laughs> Would you lean over and laugh like that again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't seen anything like that since I was a baby. <laughs> Look at Dr. Stare over here. Look at this. After what they look at all week, put a dress on it, right away they stare at it. Put your hands down here. There's nothing to be ashamed of a perfect 37D, I'll tell you that. Isn't that the way it is? When they haven't got it, they wish they had it. When they got it, they, they try to hide it. That's it. Like the girl we had in here last night. Do you remember, Mr. Uh, Veith? We had the little girl. She had a 24 AAA. <laughs> 24 AAA. You men don't know what that is. It's the closest thing to a boy you can get. <laughs> oh, look at this. You can tell they're married. Lighting her own cigarette. No, thank you. And waving her butt in front of their face for three minutes. Look at all three of them stare. Five of them. That's the only way you'll get it here. Just hand it to them. <laughs> and it's like I've always said. Woman's like a cigarette. No good unless she's lit. You know. <laughs> So round, so firm, so fully packed, so easy with the drawers. <laughs> oh, we gotta tell one quick little Florida story. 
First, there was so much talk about all the quiz shows. The one that was kind of cute was the one about the little lady from Miami and the uh, $50,000 question, you know. And the uh, master of ceremony says, and now, Miss Goldfarb, he says, for $50,000, who was the first man? She says, not for one million, but I tell. <laughs> You know, the, the same woman on her way home, a burglar holds her up, Mr. Thoreau, and he says, give me your money. She says, I don't have any money. He says, don't give me that stuff. And he grabs a hold of her purse and he searches all through it. Then he throws it away. He says, I know where you keep your money, where all these women keep their money. And he reaches inside the one bra and he reaches inside the other. Then he searches her all over, you know. And finally he says, by golly, he says, you weren't kidding. You really don't have any money. She says, don't stop now. I'll make out a check. <laughs> Look at, he's still explaining that over here. Look at that. I think they brought you girls along to make it look legitimate, I think. Right? Oh, oh, here's a little quickie for the music lovers. Uh, a little short version of the Ritual Fire Dance by Stephen Foster. Just want to make sure you're paying attention. Oh. 